I'm going to teach you how to retouch and get clean images using the Williams Academy Frequency Separation. I'll also be sharing my mixable settings and I use this method to retouch all my images. Now, once you open your image inside of Photoshop, the first and the most important thing is to remove the blemishes from your image. And to remove your blemishes, you can use any method that works for you, but I'm going to be using the Remove tool. So to do that, I'm going to click on my Williams Academy. Once I open it, I'm going to duplicate my background layer by pressing on Command J or Control J if I use new Windows. Pay close attention. After that, I'm going to select the Remove tool and it's going to create a new empty adjustment layer for me. And I'm just going to reduce my brush size by pressing on the square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size. I'm just going to paint on these blemishes once. Paint like this. Paint like this. Paint like this. And just click on OK to remove those blemishes. Let me appreciate the front after of what I've done so you can have an idea what I've tried to do. This is the before and the after. If I'm going to continue doing that with the whole of the image. I'm just going to paint on anywhere there's blemishes on the image and just to remove the blemishes from my image. Now, this method, like I said, it's very, very, very important. So after selecting the blemishes, I'm going to click on OK again. And when removing blemishes from your image, make sure to take your time to remove blemishes from your image. You don't have to rush the process. It's very, very important. All right, so I've finished removing blemishes from this image. Let's quickly see the before and after. See the before and the after. And if there's any while remaining, I'm just going to remove it with frequency separation. Now to smooth the skills the frequency separation, just come to your Williams Academy. You are going to see frequency separation right here. And you have two options. We have the frequency separation Gaussian blur and the frequency separation via media. Now the frequency separation Gaussian blur and media blur works the same way. But I prefer to use Gaussian blur because it's what I started with. If I started with medium blur, I'll be using medium blur. But Gaussian blur works for me. That's why I'm using it. So to do that, I'm going to come to a focus separation and just click on VR Gaussian Blur right here. And just going to play that action for me. All right. Now from here, if I still want to remove blemishes from the image, I'm going to select my high frequency texture copy right here. Now the reason is do the focus separation, we separate the textures and the colors. Now since blemishes are part of the textures, that's why we're going to be working on this texture layer if we want to remove blemishes. While if we want to smooth the colors or mix the colors, we are going to be working on this low frequency or this corrective tool right here. So I'm going to get there. Now to move the blemishes from this image, with my high texture copy layer selected, I'm going to click on my close stamp tool right here. Once I select my close stamp tool, for my settings for my close stamp tool, my mood is on normal, opacity is set to 100, flow is set to 100, align is selected, and make sure current layer is selected. So I'm going to zoom in, hold option, if I'm using a mark, or alternate to sample from a close by area that is good and just paint on any blemishes you want to remove like that. Option or alternate to sample and paint. Also, make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the blemishes you want to remove. Now, this is very important. Pay close attention. If you want to remove blemishes from your image with any tool at all, make sure the size of the brush you are using is equal to the same size of the blemishes you want to remove. If you want to remove the small blemishes, use a brush size that fits that small blemishes. If you want to remove a big blemishes, use a brush size that fit that big blemishes. All right, so I'm just going to look at this image and see if there's any blemishes I still want to remove and just reduce and increase my brush size to fit like that. All right, so like I said earlier also, make sure to take your time when you remove blemishes from your image. It's very, very, very important. Okay, all right, I feel like this works for me. So the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm just going to be using my mixer brush tool to mix the color and just make this image look a lot better and a lot cleaner. To do that, I'm going to pick up my mixer brush tool right here. Once I pick up my mixer brush tool, for my mixer brush settings, this is my mixer brush settings, all right? So make sure this place is set to a clean brush. Make sure this clean brush after each stroke is selected. And for my wet, my wet is on 30. My load is on 30. My mix is on zero. This mix doesn't really matter. You can leave it at 100 or you can leave it at zero. It doesn't really matter because this place right here is on transparent. All right. Now for my flow, I'm using a flow of 20%. And this place right here is set to 10. Now sample or layer is selected. The reason why sample or layer is selected is because I'm going to be working on this empty layer right here. All right. So 
if I turn off this sample or layer and I just try to brush on this empty layer, nothing is going to happen because it's an empty layer and sample or layer is not selected. But immediately I click on sample or layer and I just try to paint right now. Let me just do a rough painting so you can see that. You can see, look at this particular place right here, the before and the after. It's going to work because sample or layer is now selected. But if you are working directly on the low frequency layer, you don't have to click on this sample or layer. You can just uncheck it and work directly on a low frequency layer. But for me personally, like I said, this is what I do for all my images. I prefer to work directly on this corrective tone, which is an empty layer. Now to mix the colors on your image, first of all, turn off your high texture layer so that we can have only the colors. So you can see the textures are no longer on this image. If I turn on my texture layer again, we have the texture. If I turn it off, we have only the colors. Now, if I want to paint, this is what I do when I'm painting. Please pay close attention. First of all, make sure you have a Wacom tab. It's more easier when you do frequency separation or when using Mixer Brush too. So, get yourself a Wacom tab. To be specific, Wacom works for me. So, this is how I brush, okay? I brush highlights separately and I brush shadows separately and I brush the transition between the highlights and the shadows. For example, let me create a new empty layer again. Pick my normal brush too. I just want to show you an example, all right? So if I want to work on the highlights on the forehead, I'm going to use a brush size that fits that highlight right there. So I'm going to increase my brush size a little and just brush in cycle, all right? To fit that particular highlight, highlight right there, just to mix the color. While if I want to work on the highlights on the cheek, I'm going to reduce my brush size to fit those particular highlights on the cheek and just brush in cycle like this. So don't brush like this, like this, like this, or like this and like this. Don't brush like that. Instead, brush in cycle. That's how I brush. While if I want to work on the shadow, I'm going to select my brush size to fix the shadow. So let's say the shadow on the nose. I'm also going to brush in cycle like this on the nose. I'm not going to brush in a straight line like this or like this. I don't do that. So I try to brush in cycle. Then increase and decrease my brush size according to the parts I want to work on. So let me give you a quick recap of what I just did. So I said, if you want to brush on your image, all right, make sure the brush size you are using fits the size of maybe the highlights or the shadows you are working on. And also, make sure you are brushing your highlights separately and make sure you are brushing your shadows separately. And make sure you are brushing the transition between the highlights and the shadows separately. Also, don't brush in a straight line. I try to brush in cycle and also don't brush up and down, all right? I hope you get that. Now, let me just brush this image so you can see the before and the after. So remember to brush, make sure you hide your high texture layer, turn it off. Once you turn it off, pick your mixer brush tool. Once you pick your mixer brush tool, make sure your settings is right. And by the way, there's no right or wrong settings, just use any setting that works for you. But this is the setting that works for me and it's what I'm using. All right, so I'm gonna reduce my brush size to fit the highlight right here and just brush on this highlight like this. Now I'm going to come to the shadow. You can see how I'm increasing and decreasing my brush size as I'm painting. And I'm painting a cycle and according to the shape of the image. All right. So I'm going to come to this part and just brush the shadow part. This highlight right here. Reduce my brush size to fit that highlight and just paint on it like so. All right. Okay. I'm going to paint on this part as well. Paint on this part as well. This highlight right here. You can see how I reduce my brush size to fit that highlight because I don't want to brush highlights into shadows or shadows into highlights. Because if I do that, it's just going to make the image look flat and unrealistic. What I'm doing right now, I'm basically mixing the colors to make the image look smooth. That is what I'm doing right now. So I really have to be careful so I don't make the image look flat, okay? So I'm just going to paint on this part. So let me quickly see the before and after in case I'm making any mistake, I can just erase it, okay? So see what we've done so far, see the before and the after. You can see how we are missing the colors, the before and the after. Now if you make any mistakes, since you are working on an empty layer, all you have to do is just pick your eraser tool and just erase the effect from where you don't want it to be. So let's say for example, I want to erase this part right here. Sorry about that. So let's say for example, I want to erase this part. I'm just going to paint on this part and I'm just going to erase everything I've done on that part. So see the before and the after. It's as if I did not do anything at that particular place. So that's why I like working on this corrective tone right here. So let's continue. I want to pick my mixer brush tool again. Hide my high texture layer. Let me just reduce my brush size to fit where I want to work on. And just paint on this particular place right here. Like this works. So I'm going to do this for the whole of the image. 
So you get the point. Make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the parts of the image you are working on. Don't brush highlights into shadows and don't brush shadows into highlights. And also don't brush on the straight line. So I'm just going to do this for the whole of the image right now. All right, let's see the before and after. See the before focus separation, the before and the after. Take a look at the image. You can see how good it is. The before and the after is looking smooth and we still have the textures on the image, the before and the after. One more time, the before and the after. Now, after smoothing the skin, what we are going to do next, we are going to add more dimension or more depth to our image using Global Dodge and Burn. To do your Global Dodge and Burn, come to Williams Academy. Under Dodge and Burn, click on Global right here. Now, if you don't know what Global Dodge and Burn is, Global Dodge and Burn is like contour Dodge and Burn. We are just going to make the shadow part of the image more darker and the highlight part of the image more brighter to add more dimension to our image. Let me show you how that works. So immediately, I click on Global Dodge and Burn. We are going to have some layers right here. Now, since I want to make the highlights more bright, I'm going to click on this strong brightening right here. I'm going to be working on this one. Now, after I select this strong brightening, I'll select my normal brush tool and make sure my foreground color is set to white. If it's on any other color, click on this black and white right here to change to default black and white. Since our layer mask is on black, we are going to be using a white brush to paint. So I'm going to zoom in on this image. After my settings, I'm going to take my passes to 100 and flow to 100. And I'm just going to paint on the highlight like this. Any part of the highlight, I'm just going to draw a lines on the highlight. Also, this part on the nose, I'm just going to paint on the highlight on the nose like so. Also, this highlight right here, like this. This part right here, like this. A little bit on the lips. And this highlight right here, I'm still going to paint on it. So basically, anywhere there's highlight on the image, I'm just going to be painting on it like that. This part right here. I come to the hand. This part like this, just a tiny bit. This part as well. Okay. Take a look at the texture, please. This part as well. Also, this part as well. All right. Now, I'm going to come to the shadow. For the shadow, I'm going to come to my strong dark knee. And I'm just going to do the same thing for this part. This is the shadow part, like this. This eyes part, like this, because they are shadowed. This part of the nose. Also, this part of the nose. This part of the lips, a little bit. Uh, this part of the cheek, just a tiny bit. Also, I'll do the same for this other part of the forehead, like so. I'm going to do a little bit on that neck. Since it's dark already, but I'm going to do a little bit right there. Also, this part of the hand, just do a little bit like this. All right, this part as well, just to add depth and dimension to our image. So I think like this works for me. Now what I'm going to do from here, with my layer mask selected, I'm going to click on properties. And if you can't find the properties, all you have to do is come to windows, and click on properties right here and it's going to open the properties of the layer mask so what i'm going to do from here i'm just going to feather it now see what happened when i start to feather it i'm not going to move it up a little bit like this so you can see what's happening to the shadow part this is the before so immediately i start to feather it it's just going to blend to the image all right so let me show you the before after see the before and the after the before and the after and you can feather it more if you want it to spread more but I think about 90 works on me or 91. So this is the before and the after. And I'll do the same thing for the highlights. I'm going to come with my strong brightening right here. Just fade it as well. Just to face the highlight. So let's take it up a little bit. All right. So I think it's the same works on me for the highlights. All right. So let's see how we found after for global jam burn. This is the before and the after. The before and the after. You okay, can see just add that depth and dimension to our image. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to whiten the eyes. So whiten the eyes, I'm going to click on my Williams Academy again and click on eyes right here. Once that action load, it was materially going to create a black layer mask for you with this white eyes. All you have to do from here, select your normal brush tool, make sure passes to 100, fully set to 100, and just paint on the white parts of the eyes, like so, to whiten it. And do the same thing for these other eyes. Let's see you make a mistake, all you have to do is switch to a black brush by pressing X on your keyboard. Or use this angle right here to switch between white and black. So if you make a mistake, switch to a black brush and just erase the mistake. Like so, from where you don't want it to be. Alright, so not just for the eyes that it whitening. You can use black to erase mistake from any layer mask at all. Alright, now if I zoom in, you can see there are no eye veins or eye vessels on these eyes anymore. So bring back those veins to make it look even more realistic. All you have to do is click on this remove blood vessel right here and just release the opacity 
a little bit to bring back some of the vessels like so all right now see the before and the after let the eyes is looking too white you can just reduce the overall opacity of the group you just reduce the opacity until you feel it okay so i feel like this works for me 68 see the before and after and there's no perfect number so just use whatever works for your image i still feel it's looking too much i'm going to reduce it a little bit even more like so all right see the before and the after i feel like this works better for me i'm just going for everything we've done for this image so far so you can see where we started from and where we are right now all right so take a look at the image now this is our original image you can see the skin is not smooth and there are blemishes on the image and this is the after you can see how smooth and how clean it is and we still have the textures on our image now finally what i'm going to do i'm going to open this Williams academy again and just click on finish right here and immediately i click on finish if i zoom in take a look at what happened see the image see the before finish layer and after finish layer just add a bit of textures and just make the image a lot more sharper so see the before and the after but i usually don't leave it at 100 percent so i'm going to take the opacity down a little bit until i feel it's okay so let me just use about 30 so 30 always works for me all right so this is the before and the after so this is how you can retouch and get clean image using frequency separation and if you want to learn how to retouch your image using micro dodge and bond from start to finish check out this video right here i'll see you guys in my next one stay creative